poster is discussing regulation of compound leaf development in a basal eudicot species, Ischoltia californica, also known as the California poppy. So we see in plants a great variety of morphologies and develop most developmental processes to reach those morphologies. What I'm interested in doing is comparing a basal eudicot species, both to more basal and to uh, the core eudicot species, such as the models Arabidopsis and Anterhinum. In particular, I am looking at leaf development uh, with regards to the Cincinnata gene. Cincinnata, uh, identified in Anterhinum, and also the homologues lanceolate in tomato, and the duplicated homologues TCP3, TCP4, and TCP10 in Arabidopsis. Uh, these genes are cell cycle regulators and have been implicated in leaf development and surface curvature in leaves. So what I have done is to uh, use both uh, my own cloning and three prime race work to obtain sequence data for a copy of this gene, a homologous copy, in Ischoltzia. And I've also used database sequences from the 1KP project and the Phytometasin project to complete this sequence. Using this sequence data, I've been able to construct a phylogeny and uh, place this sequence and other basal eudicot sequences uh, in a frame of reference with basal, and basal angiosperms and core eudicots. So in this phylogeny, I show that uh, in basal eudicots, we seem to have only one single copy of this gene, whereas in species such as Arabidopsis, we've had multiple duplication events. And the same is true for genes related to this Cincinnati gene, uh, members of the TCP transcription factor family. So, taking the sequence data, um, I've been able to use virus-induced gene silencing to knock down this gene in Ischoltzia, this gene I refer to as ECSIN. So, as you can see in the diagram, uh, I've used two constructs for VIGS. One construct is specific to the TCP domain. However, to ensure that I am only silencing this specific copy, um, because the TCP fa transcription factor family is much larger than one gene, uh, I also use a very specific construct as well. In both cases, I found that when I was able to silence the gene, I had a dramatic increase in the dissection of the leaves. So what we see is that when we have knockdown of this negative cell cycle regulator, we allow an increased period of time for cell division, the initiation of new leaflets. And so what we have is a dramatically uh, increased uh, compound leaf. Interestingly, we also see a proximally distal difference in the effects. And uh, this is interesting because uh, we may make inferences on the timing of uh, the maturation expansion of certain leaflets in different parts of the leaf and uh, put us in a reference frame of when is sin being expressed, for example. I've also done in situ hybridization to uh, start to reveal the expression pattern of this gene. And what I will do is to compare both the uh, knockdown phenotype effects and these expression patterns to known species such as Arabidopsis and Anterhinum. Subsequently, I'll also go on to look at other basal eudicot species, uh, more specific, the members of the Papaveraceae, Cystocatnos, Vesicaria, and Hypercoan procumbens. And these have leaves with different morphologies and also uh, different leaf developmental processes. So it'll be interesting to compare these developmental processes from a, a point of view of gene expression. Uh, furthermore, I'll also look at other genes in Scholzia that control leaf development. So thank you very much for watching.